There is no shortness of love on this channel for import video games, and I have some cool stuff to show you here today. Hey everyone, Gary here from Rock Solid Productions, and one of the things that I love most about importing video games and video game systems is the fact, first of all, they're less expensive, generally speaking, but second of all, you also get unique things in the game. Specifically, what we're gonna talk about is five games for the NES that's also available on the Famicom Disk System that have enhanced audio. And what I wanna know from you here today in this video before we get started, have you ever imported a game? And if so, what was it? And if you also have, what is your favorite? Now, we have, like I mentioned, five games here for the Famicom Disk System that we are going to go ahead and highlight because they do sound so much better than their NES counterparts. Now, the thing that we're going to do with this is we are playing them all through our HDMI modded NES that we have here. And yes, I know I just knocked over my Nintendo sign. Now, the way that I have to do this to get the best audio to come through, there's actually a sub menu in the NES HDMI mod that enables those audio channels. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and set up and we are going to go compare side by side right now. All right, first up is an absolute classic for the NES, and that is Kid Icarus, and this is my number five on the list. Taking a listen to the theme music here, you hear how good it sounds on the NES, or in this instance, this is actually on the NES Online, because I actually don't own a physical version of Kid Icarus. I was kind of surprised to learn that myself, so let's take a look into the game itself so you can kind of hear. Overall, you know, not terrible sounding, but ooh, just got just about got hit by those guys. Now, one thing too, I want you to hear when he dies. So that's what it sounds like on the NES. Now let's take a listen to what it sounds like through the enhanced audio on the Famicom Disk System. So here we have it on the Famicom Disk System and you can hear the depth of the audio is a lot deeper and richer, has more bass to it. And then just, I'm gonna pause this real quick. And then so you can see what I'm talking about with the menu. So there's the menu itself. We're gonna go to audio options, enables. There we have all the different mappers enabled for the different sound chip sort of things that the Famicom Disk System can do. So we're gonna back out of there. I always hated these little flying snake things. Uh, I know they've got a technical term. Even there as Pit got hit, I'm sure that you could hear that it sounded better and different. Yeah. Overall, I mean, it's, I'm trying not to talk a whole lot during this just because it's all about the audio at this point. Now we're going to actually let Pit die here so you can hear what it sounds like as well. Much better, I think, on the Famicom Disk System. What do you think? Let's move on to our number four game. All right, number four on my list is Castlevania II. This is another game that the US version looks and sounds really good, but the Japanese one, as you'll hear in a minute, even better. I mean, overall, okay. A little bit weak on the bottom end, but like, it's not terrible. Ooh, hit me back into town. And again, we'll try to go back to the other side of town since I don't have any uh, real weapons or anything yet besides just the, the basic whip. It is a terrible night for a curse, by the way. I'm not sure if you were aware of that.
good piece of music here too, but when you hear the Famicom version, as I just died, I think you're gonna be a bit shocked. Listen to the bass. Again, the bottom, it's just richer, it's just fuller. It's so much better than what we got here in the States with the NES. We're gonna go back to where we were in the uh, US version as well, just so you can hear the different music and whatnot in that level as we exit the town. Check this, it's so good. Even as enemies are destroyed, the the sound quality is so much better. Everything about the Famicom Disk System version of Simon's Quest from an audio standpoint is just, it's so much better, although I'm getting an audio glitch or a video glitch there and I don't know why that's happening, but um, that is Simon's Quest. I'm sure it probably has more to do with my uh, either capture card. Yeah, because it not doing it behind me, so um, that's what Simon's Quest sounds like. Up next, middle of the pack, for me at least, is Metroid. Again, great game in the U.S. Looks good, sounds okay. Let's get to the main music here and you can kind of see and hear what it looks and plays like. I mean, overall, not terrible. Pretty much what we've gotten accustomed to since 1985 or six, whatever it was. Doors open, doors close. You know, all this good stuff here out of Samus. We'll go back and we'll get the, uh, the sphere ball here in a second. I know that's not the correct name for it. I must admit, I've never been a huge Metroid fan and I don't know if it's because I felt like this one was just not great as far as, like, listen. Not bad. Um, you know, the, the lack of a map and everything, I know people have complained about that for ever and a day. So this is what it sounds like on the NES. Now let's take a listen to what it sounds like on the Famicom Disk System. So again, another one, just having some issues with my Famicom disk system. This is coming through uh, with my uh, Famicom Sharp Turbo Twin. Now we gotta switch sides. Again, this is one of the major things that just kind of sucks about the Famicom disk system, but it does so many other things that are awesome, you kind of forgive it. Again, you can just hear the richness in the audio on this versus what the US version was. But even little things like shooting the enemies sounds better. Wait until you hear when I shoot at the door here in a second, how much better it sounds. Now, again, this is also going through our RetroTank 5X. We are using the composite output from uh, the system itself going straight into the RetroTank. And this is five times line multiplied on composite. I think you'll agree this looks and sounds great. Again, composite, as I almost got hit there. All right, so those are my bottom three what about my top two that's right the legend of zelda is number two on my list listen to the theme song it's iconic and i love it so much but it sounds so much better on the famicom disc system we're going to dive into the game for just a moment here as well so you get to kind of hear it as well as see it You 
you know, hear Link go up and down the stairs, hear the text as it's driven uh, on screen. As we come out, listen to the sword. You know, pretty much what we've gotten used to here in the States, am I right? Well, wait a second, because the Japanese version, the Famicom Disk System version, even better. Listen to that theme. It's so much better than what we got here in the U.S. Just, I'm going to pause myself. Listen to this. There's so much more there. There's so many more layers and tracks there that just make it even more beautiful. And some of it's in English. And if you can't tell from this screen here, yes, the second one, Vink, I did get this copy of Zelda from the one and only Vink from the Famicom Dojo and Japan Retro Direct. Well, I apologize. My audio is going to sound a little bit off here because I noticed during the edit, I actually had some sort of audio buzz when capturing right off of my HDMI modded NES. So this is actually footage and audio off of my Sharp Famicom Twin Turbo. If you take a listen here, especially when Link throws the sword, listen to how much better this sounds. You can also hear when he's making other moves, when he's going up and down stairs, just how vastly superior this audio is compared to the original audio off of the NES. One of the things I had forgotten about was the fact that when you either pick up an item or drop a bomb, it sounds better too. Check this out. Zelda on the Famicom Disk System just absolutely plays and sounds amazing. But if this is only my number two, what would my number one be? Believe it or not, my number one favorite sounding import game on the Famicom Disk System is Gyrus. And the US version, ton of fun, looks great, sounds great. Let's check it out right now. Listen to that, that's actually really good. I love the audio on, it's classic music on this. But wait till you hear the Famicom in a second. The music honestly reminds me if it was something out of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, to be honest with you. You know, overall, looking and sounding great, right? You know, or at least looking and sounding really good, I would say. But wait until oh, you guys are going to... This is going to be too cool when I go to the Famicom Disk System now. Listen. Listen to that. That's so good. That's so flippin' good. Um, so with Control A, it's like if you start here and you're looping around, you press right to go to here, and then it goes to left. Whereas I'm gonna just have it where right left. I'm. I just prefer B. The richness. You can't fake that. And again, I think in this, it's even more apparent where, you know, I, I said Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure earlier uh, for the music that it reminded me of. I, I think this makes it even more obvious as far as the audio quality of the music, how it sounds like, the, the, the overall presentation. It's just so good. 
Now, one thing I will say on all of these, not overly expensive on most of these games, about 50 bucks or under on all of them. Now, the best way, in my opinion, to play the Famicom Disk System games um, is to do so with the Sharp Famicom Twin Turbo, um, and then go from there to the um, composite output into like a RetroTank 2X or 2X. Um, you can't get the HDMI mod that I have anymore. Kevtris just has not been producing it. He's been more busy working on, uh, you know, not cast and shade or anything, just it is what it is. He's been working more on the, um, yes, power, on the analog type systems and things along those lines. Um, so just not available anymore. But these are great looking, great sound games. You know, if you're just looking to get started with the Famicom Disk System collection and you're looking for what games to get on disc, these are five great choices. So there you have it, our look and listen at some of our favorite games for the Famicom Disk System and the fact that they sound so much better than what we got here in the US on the NES. Now it's kind of a bummer that the NES did not get that enhanced audio like what you were able to get over in Japan with the Famicom Disk System. I believe Voltar has a mod where you can go ahead and enable that. I do have my HDMI modded system. If you want to see how I did that, I'll have that link for you right up there. I also do have my Sharp Famicom Twin Turbo, which gives me that functionality. Just the video isn't quite as crisp there. But I want to know out of my five favorites, which one was yours? I, the first time I played Gyrus here, I was blown away by the audio. It sounded so, so good. And to this day, it is still my favorite sounding game on the Famicom Disk System. Now, if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, like more of our videos that we're going to have coming up on the Panasonic Q GameCube, including some of our repairs that we have to do on it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way, every time we upload new content, you're kept the most informed and up to date. And if you really like what you see here, you can join our Patreon, you can become a channel member, or you can even just send a super thanks. Now, if you want to check out some of the other videos that we've done here on the Famicom, Famicom Disk System, the Famicom, if this is really cool, is an adapter that I made where you can use the NES controllers on the Famicom and the Sharp Turbo Twin. Those episodes are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastlemaniaGames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.